I'm SirTapTap, and pretty much the most common question people always ask me is, how do you get event currency easy? And there really isn't, in the regular game, any. there's nothing you really can do except watch ads. Now the thing is, you can watch ads automatically with a macro. Now this only really applies to Android users. This used to work for iOS, but you had to transfer your save to the Android emulator, which is what we're going to be using, using the Facebook save, and they removed the Facebook save, so if you're on iOS, sorry. You're really out of luck on this one. Um, you can't transfer your save in. So what we're gonna do, this is Knox Player. We're gonna go to bignox.com. I know it sounds a little weird, but it is the name of the website. You're going to, um, website thing's a little scrunched down here. No, Ugh. recording, recording regular desktop at a mobile resolution is kind of awkward, bear with me. So you're gonna get this knock setup thing. You do want to be careful as you go through the setup because there will be, um, like every downloader, every on every installer, um, with, um, you know, online these days tends to do this. So what you're gonna do, overwrite install. I believe at some point it will ask you to install some other stuff and you just gotta say no. Um, or maybe they removed it, I don't know. But uh, I already have it installed, but I'm just going to install the latest version, it doesn't matter. Um, what Nox Player is, is an Android emulator. So basically it's just another Android device that runs virtually on your Windows or Macintosh PC. Um, laptops work too. Um, you don't need anything too fancy. This is a free program. It does have some ads in it. Oh, I think they might have removed the stupid thing that tries to, um, oh no, that's a new, oh no. Um, I guess they must have removed the thing that tries to, it used to like want to install like Norton or some stupid crap. You, you know the usual way that internet things work these days. So here is Knox. Let me put it better view for you here. I think it's this one. That. There we go. So, this is what Knox Player looks like once you're on the inside. It is, um, oh, it's a little zoomed out. There we go. It really, it literally just is Android. Once you're here, this is Android. I'm gonna go into my settings. It's just like an Android phone because it is an Android phone. It's not a physical device, it's a virtual one. But basically what we need to do here, just go to the Play Store and you can see I'm already signed in. You'll need to sign in with your real Google account and stuff. Um, people are like, you know, is, is this a security risk, blah, blah, blah. In theory, possibly, I've been using this for like four years and without problems. Um, but the thing is, your Google account should have a two-factor authentication on it. So if you don't have that, set that up. And then even if they steal your password, they can't use it because they can't use your two-factor authentication. So um, just good excuse to make sure all of your security stuff is up to snuff. Um, just log in on here, um, get your Google account on there. We're gonna go for Tapfish. I'm gonna download Abyssrium, and again, I already have it on here, but um, I already have it installed, so we're gonna load it up. Like I said, everything works here just like your phone. It literally just is an Android device. This is not, this is not Abyssrium on PC exactly. It's Android on PC is what it is. So once you get into the app, everything is completely identical to how your phone works. Um, and in just a little bit, I'll show you how the actual macro works. That's how we're going to get event currency really fast. Well, not really fast, but w without effort, which is what really matters, honestly. So now here we're in the game. Um, what you want to do, the game should automatically load your cloud save. It should do that. If it doesn't, then what you need to do, you will have to skip through the tutorial. Um, then it should load your cloud save. It might load two saves. That's what it does to me. It loads a save from like 2007 and then it loads a second one. Um, and if it doesn't do that, just make sure you're signed in. Um, click this little duder to, you know, make sure you're signed into Google Play. It should do it automatically, but if it doesn't, um, then you want to do restore from cloud. It'll grab your latest cloud save. Um, you might want to manually save on your device. You know, make sure that that's the last save time is something reasonable. Um, their, their cloud save stuff is really buggy, but as long as you read what the time the last save was and it's, you're sure it's your save, uh, you should be just fine. So once you have your save loaded into here, you're just fine and we're ready to get onto the portion of the video that is checking out the macro. So 
I just figured I recorded just the macro and then I realized, oh wait, what well, people probably watching the video will not have any idea how to use the emulator. It is quite simple, but uh, that's all you really need to know on it. There are some settings and stuff you can set with it, but you really shouldn't have to mess with it um, to just to get it working. The faster your PC is, the better. If your PC is not very fast, then what we can do, uh, let me just show you some settings here. If, you're, if your thing is running slow, first thing you want to do, go to this performance settings. You can set this performance setting, you can set this lower or higher. Um, it will run faster, the emulated device will run faster if you put it on high settings, but if your PC can't support that, you might actually want to set it on low, and then set this resolution lower. Um, go to game settings, you want to reduce this frame rate. Um, if you're just doing this for Abyssrium, like 20 FPS is just fine. You don't need, you definitely don't need 60, which is what I have for other recordings, but 20 will do. And um, you can set it to a lower setting and it might run a little slow, but that's, we really don't care because what we're doing ultimately here is just automatically playing the game to get us some event currency. So on to portion two of the video, where we talk about the macro itself. If you played Abyssrium, you're probably a little bit tired of the grind. Depending, especially depending on how long you played. So, what if you could do things automatically? So, I've actually done a video about this before, but um, there's this nice little thing called Nox Player, which I already have a video showing you how to get. It's very simple. Um, this only really works, you have to transfer your save to it. It's an emulator that you run on your PC or your Mac device, and um, it basically lets you transfer your save from Android onto. A virtual Android on your PC and then with that Android you can do things called macros and um, if you're on iOS the they removed the Facebook feature it's kind of stupid actually um, they had a Facebook feature for like two years where you could save and you could even transfer between iOS and Android and then they broke it and then they left it broken for a year and then instead of fixing it uh, eventually they just removed it <laughs> it was it was pretty sad but anyway, yeah, if you're on iOS, uh, unfortunately, not really a helpful video for you, so just be aware of that. So, all we're going to do here, um, we are going to go over here to this little macro button, and that brings up this bad boy here. So now we can move this over here. And if you're wondering why I have a mouse on my videos, it's because, yes, I record using... Um, using Nox player just because it's a, it's it's just easier to record plus these so what do you do with a macro a macro basically just means okay you press record and then let's go into this menu here and leave and now I'm going to press the stop button and the script is saved now I'm going to press play again and look it just replays exactly what I did and that's all a macro really is. It's just a recording of something that you've already done. Um, I can't really share macro scripts. I think in theory you can export them, but the thing is, uh, macros like do it basically records what absolute position your mouse cursor is when you click and stuff. And so if your if your virtual device is set up in any way different, it will uh, it'll be different. So just make you have to make them yourself, but it's really not that hard. This is a common macro I use just to span the taps to get um, to activate the hermit crab to grab my farm materials. As you can see, it just kind of clicks all around in a in a little group here. Um, I probably should have made it click a little bit higher up here to get that krill, but oh well. Um, this is a pretty good one to run if you just want to get a little bit of vitality and mostly farm materials overnight is what this one is basically for. Um, that and to charge. I mostly use it to get my daily taps um, for that stupid daily that's like tap 2,000 times. Really tough on your wrists, very easy on your computer. Um, so basically that's all you have to do is just press record, tap a bunch in a safe place. Now when making macros, the biggest thing is your macro needs to be able to loop ideally infinitely. If you accidentally click on say the um, the mystery chest, it's going to ruin your macro because you're going to get stuck here and then your click stop registering and unless you happen to click the cancel, it's not going to work. So that's why I kind of click in this area to avoid the chest because the chest is always in a predefined position. Um, that is also why our macros tend to not combine different ideas. In theory, what you could do is have a macro that clicks a bunch of stuff, then it casts your skills, 
and then it watches like the ad here to do the ice cream crab. Um, you could set something like that up, but it's drastically more likely that it will just hang up and freeze on something. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how my favorite current macro works. So all macros require a little bit of setup. So for this macro, um, what we're gonna do is constantly watch the ice cream hermit crab ads just to get tons of event currency. Um, yesterday I only had 100,000 event currency and I, I really don't like watching hundreds of ads, which as you can see it has watched. Um, so what I did, and again, this is, this is, you know, pretty much cheating. So if you don't want to do this, you know, don't, <laughs> that's all I can really say. Um, if you consider it cheating, it basically is, but you know, the game is just grindy as heck and there's not really any gameplay involved. So personally, morally, I'm, I'm pretty, plus they stole my candy. Did you know that? They stole my candy. I'm still, I'm still upset about that. So I, I don't really have any misgivings about this but anyway if you want to do this at your own risk all of that kind of stuff what we're gonna do record a macro we're gonna watch an ad and the thing about ads is that oh sometimes they're horizontal sometimes the click button is in a different way um, how do you close the ad that was the toughest thing to figure out here the important thing is once the ad is done we're gonna wait a little over 30 seconds sometimes people get insanely I don't think that's how rubber duckies work. Um, I, sometimes you get extremely long ads. I don't usually ever have that happen personally. But um, what we're gonna do, wait for the ad to finish. We're gonna wait a few more seconds. We're gonna wait like say 10 extra seconds. As you see, the problem with this ad, there's no, there's no exit button. But what we're gonna do, click the home button. And then we're going to click tap tap fish and then we're right back here isn't that great so now we have cast the hermit crab and we actually don't need to do anything else we can now stop our macro we'll call this add watch demo and what we're gonna do so we're going to loop it until the stop button is pressed. And then we are going to add a loop interval, which will probably be, let's say, um, I believe we need about, is that, what do we need? We need a little bit more than five minutes. So let's go with, that should do. What did I use for my old one? Wait, isn't that too little? Wait. Oh, wait. No, that's 10 minutes. Um, five minutes is 300 seconds. So, 380 seconds. Wait a minute. Now, 330 seconds should actually be fine. So, what that, all that delay does is you have to wait for the next ad, right? Um, and I add a little bit of extra delay because you just want to kind of do these things slowly because sometimes maybe the game will lag a little bit and that can affect what happens with your clicks. So you just want to take things slow and you want to keep things consistent is the main thing with the um, with the whole deal uh, with the macros. Um, and also the biggest thing stopping this for me initially was um, if you watch ads too quickly in Abyssrium, sometimes it just gets stuck on loading forever. It just breaks and you don't get an ad. It just has that like loading pop up and you have to force close the game. Um, that does eventually happen for me. It happened after like over a hundred casts though, but um, you'll just have to check on it like once per day, which not big, not a big deal. But that's why this kind of extra delay when we went in here and we added a little extra delay beyond five minutes is just to give it extra time to load that ad in because if it doesn't. If it seems like if Abyssrium doesn't have an ad loaded when you press the ad button, it, it does. It just breaks. It doesn't load the ad. It doesn't kick you back out. It just doesn't know what to do, which. That's Abyssrium. Being broken is pretty much the, the only thing they're really good at. That and the graphics. But programming wise, breaking things is really, is really their peak skill. Um, and that's unfortunate, but it's been three years now, over three years, and I, I do not expect anything to ever get better programming wise. That's right, Parker. That's right. Goodness. 
Um, and with the macro recorder, it's actually pretty advanced. Um, you can restart the emulator, which you shouldn't need to do, but if something... I mean, you, you need a pretty complicated script to require that, but in theory, if you have something that breaks after a certain amount of iterations, and starting the app is already part of your script, you could do something like that, but we, we don't need to worry about that. Um, you can also auto start your script when you start the emulator if you wanted to like set up a script that's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna launch all my different apps and stuff um, and do a little daily thing. But again, we wanna keep our macros simple because we wanna keep them working and looping. So that's pretty much all there is to it. You can use macros for really anything. You can record a macro to, you know what? Let's, let's make a new macro right now. Uh, let's cancel that, record a new one. Let's just have one that just casts the three skills. And that's all it'll do. And so, um, what's 15, what's, I, I, you'd need to know how many seconds, you know, two hours or whatever is. It doesn't really matter too much with this one actually, because like, if it does it when there's no skills to cast, it just doesn't do anything. So, you know, it doesn't even matter. Um, so we can just leave that going if you wanted to get Vitality overnight. Honestly, Vitality overnight doesn't work very well because you need to upgrade your stuff. You need to buy fish to upgrade. It, it just doesn't work as well. Um, grinding for event currency and farm materials is much easier. But uh, you could do something that casts your skills, upgrades the rock, and then you come back and you buy a fish or two. But um, again, macros are pretty much... Figure out what you need to have done, and you can make macros yourself. That's why I'm not really sharing macros. Partly just because, like I said before, um, if I say I had this, I think this is a 720p emulator. If I had this as a 1080p emulator, um, the clicks would all be up in the top left corner instead, and it would be too small. Or if, it, say, the device was na naturally in a horizontal orientation, then the coordinates would be different, and it just, it's different for every virtual device, so it really is easier to just record it yourself. You might screw up once or twice, but hey, it's just a simple macro, it's, it's not a big deal if you mess it up, you'll figure it out pretty quick. It really is just doing what you want to do, and um, you just loop it for a bit to see if it breaks, and you just change it a little bit. It's kind of a game in its own self, so <laughs> try that if you can. Um, it really does help with the cheese. I, I had I had one fourth this many candies uh, yesterday, so I might actually finish this event mostly because I'm willing to cheat. But hey, <laughs> I I've I've made guides for this glitchy, frustrating game for three years. I think I've earned a little bit of cheats as a treat. So, I hope that helps. As always, check out my Patreon if my guides help. It's in the description. Make sure to subscribe for more videos. And um, tell me your favorite, tell me your favorite event fish in the comments. I'm trying to have these little discussion prompts. I should really have it at the front of the video, but tell me your favorite event fish.